Hello, it's Esther again. I'm coming to you live right here, right now, unless you're watching this recorded. I'm bringing you another episode of what I call Exploring Creativity, where I share with you for uh, a little while a few of the pieces that I've been working on in... Um, I share a piece. I look at it in depth and try to share with you a little bit of like... Um, what goes into making it um, look behind some of the motivating forces of the creative acts that went into that piece of art. Um, and here we go. I'm going to give you a really quick view on what we'll be looking at today. In fact, I'm going to just turn the screen sideways because it all fits on there like that. Um, let's see. Apparently I can't rotate my phone, but I know I can't, but here you go. It is... These are three paintings that I worked on in 2013. And I figured we might as well take a little moment. We're gonna take a moment to really look in depth. And I'm gonna give you, see I've been doing this for a little while. Um, actually I've been doing Exploring Creativity. This is the 11th episode, uh, not including the ones on Instagram. And we're gonna take a little moment to look very closely because other things get revealed. It's not just about the colors and the lines. It's about, you know, what's what happens in life and all that kind of stuff. Well, as much as you want to read. It, it's whatever you want to read into it. Okay, so let us flip around and have a closer look. I hope the colors are good. I hope it doesn't come out too dark. Um, anyway, that's Panagea A. Panagea B and Pangea C. Let's see. We'll get into the titles in a little bit, but first, let's look at what's happening here. Okay, now these were done, as I said, here, let's focus on this one for a moment. These were done in 2013, and they were part of an evolution within my work. Um, see, everything is in context. Um, so, in earlier work, I'd come across this. Let's look at what this is, actually. I'm going to tell you what this is very closely. These are little inky chains. And you can see, let's see, it's three loops. No, it's loops. It's chain loops of different lengths, enrobed in, I don't know, like a, it's held in, like if it's um, a sheath or a, um, is it mylar or a myline? It's around like a cell or something around a tube. Like, so it's, in, it's contained. Those, those chains are contained within themselves. And they don't overlap. They go in and out and in and out. So that, um, previously I was working on it much bigger. Um, I would have different larger bits. And I discovered I had little, little tiny bits. And I was actually kind of eventually interested in the tiny bit on how dense it could become um, in the varying sizes and pulling it out and expanding it. And, and if you want to see other images, you can find them on the website or on Facebook. But um, these were, this was about expanding it's scale even because what I was having in the other paintings were were small little bits, little bits within within a larger area. And so it was almost I hate to say decorative, um, because it's so abused. People hate the word decorative when it comes to art making. But um it was kind of decorative and I'm not gonna get too worked up over it. You know, we all go through phases and at one point decorative will be like, you know, the thing to do. So it doesn't really bother me, but it was, but I wanted to do more with it. And so I did more with it and I brought it out and made it, I wanted to see it bigger, basically. I just wanted to see it bigger. And I guess I wanted to see it on pink. <laughs> there were also a series of light blue ones like this um, that have all gone their separate ways um, because it is, it is one piece 
but it's individual pieces, you know, just like a family, just like a group of trees. You've got individuals, you've got connections between them. So anyway, talking about the scale of it, um, because scale is an interesting idea in, um, let's focus over there. Well, let's focus on that negative space. And I don't mean the bar. I mean, how these things kind of worked themselves. Because actually when I work on composition, I don't think in advance, I don't plan in advance what kind of composition I'm working on. But it tends to end up being something not symmetrical yet balanced, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm not comfortable with symmetry. It, it bothers me. Um, and, um, but I want to have a certain balance, like a weight on one side, a weight on the other side, a movement on one side, a movement on the other side, so that you kind of, you know, or even an unbalance. Like this is toppling over, but it's heavy set. And if this is lead and this is fluff, it'll stay put. You know, it's within your own reading. Here also we have, so I think that the, the shapes did not purposely get made to look like they were going to fit together, but it was just a certain sensibility of asymmetry and balance that makes them, makes them work, you know. I don't know. Um, doesn't that work in your life? <laughs> you know, like trying to make all these things. Look at look at the negative space. Look at that negative space. It comes around, swoops down, swoops around, comes up. Look at woo. Ah, oh, I mean, for lack of a better word, isn't it pretty? Okay, so um, oh. Hello, Mara. Good to see you here. So um, anyway, so we've got the sheaths and we've got the, oh, so scale. Yes, scale is something different than size. And scale plays in my mind. Size is how big something is. Something can be really big. But you put it into a picture this big and you can't tell if it's big or small. And I tend to think that's important like how something holds its own space. But um, yeah, I'm gonna look at you for a little bit. Um, I think it's important how something holds its own space, like scale or, um, but scale, like there was a Joel Shapiro uh, sculpture of a tiny, tiny chair in a very big room and that held its own space. Now with this, a lot of times people think of scale and think bigger is better. You know, if it's a little white canvas, that's one thing. But it's if it's a gigantic canvas of white, it's much more powerful. And there's certain, you know, in certain ways there's truth to that. But something very intense like a small piece of embroidery or a gold nugget or a tiny diamond, they, they've got these powers. They've got, you know, I mean, diamonds and gold, it's got that value. But, you know, embroidery, something that's, you know, a mini miniatures that get worked on. So I don't like to mix up my, my um, scale and my size. All that said, I thought it would be actually quite interesting to see more of this and just have it be more. Like the more of it, the crazier it gets. It's so intense. Like when you get right in there, as you probably have already noticed, it's intense stuff. Um, and I'm telling you things that it's about the interconnection and whatnot. But to be honest, I don't really know. I mean, and, and yeah, the comment, it looks like Germany. Does that one look like Germany? There we go, Germany. Could be France or Germany, I don't know. And people see things within it. You read into it and, um, you know, it's the, it's the crossing, it's, it's the maps. There's, um, there's many things to see in it. And so in some ways, when I'm doing this exploring creativity, I'm also trying to figure it out because it's part of that beautiful space of being, you know, in the I don't know world. So let's see. The, we have mentioned a bit of composition, a bit of space, a bit of interpretation, and I think we're going to end on the title because the title is... As I've misspelled it, I believe, it's Pangea, 
which it is that, um, what do you call it? That uh, Pangea, hello, it's the continents. It's the whole big earth blob. And then it's separating, which I've never been able to understand that. What, was there a big blob of land on one half of the earth and the rest of it was water? It confuses me, but in any case, they separated. And so, so the title came to me, obviously, even though it wasn't done on purpose. It, I title after the fact. I title, I title when um, they, I title when they're born into the, born into the world, when they become public. Generally, that's when I like to put words and name something. Like it gets birthed out. I mean, it's birthed out previously, but when it's presented, it gets a name. I'm having a little more trouble doing that with my prints because they come out and they're a series and other things are happening. But within paintings and larger drawings and things that get worked on for longer amounts of time, the title comes afterward. So I'm just gonna pull back. Oh, and of course, hello, 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 Pangea. <laughs> It's all connected. <laughs> it's that freaking interconnection. Won't leave me alone like a monkey on my back, babe. So I want to turn it sideways. I can't, but there's a photos of it online. There you go. That's what we've got. And um, I think I saw the question asking if these were recent paintings. And no, they're not. It's the um, it's that density I was working on, which eventually evolved into much larger paintings because I did want to see it bigger. Oh, and I forgot to show you. Here we have, it's made with this. This is, I mean, it's, um, a, it's a, an acrylic paint background, but then it's um, pen and ink like that. You take your ink and you take your pen and you dip it. And so it's very stressful because sometimes it could be well, it's very stressful and it's also pretty fabulous because sometimes it can be much thicker. Like when I buy a new nib, can you see that? I don't know, you can see it, it's not in focus. But when you buy a new nib, it changes the way the lines are. It changes the thicknesses. I mean, from this distance, you can probably easily see the darkness is thicker and then lighter and darker, which wonderfully creates volume. It creates volume within a simple black line. Over there too, you've got, you've got it, an undulation that happens because these things can be quite irregular. They can even make splodges and mistakes. And then I have to title my piece, The Spot, because you really gotta roll with these things, you know? Anyway, um, I, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm so happy you've shown up and that I could share this with you. And hopefully you got this far. <laughs> and if you didn't, say la vie. Um, if you liked this, please share it with anyone that you would care to share it with. I'm happy with you sharing it. And also the Facebook AI is happy with you sharing it. Getting it out there, getting it sorted. I mean, I want to get it out there. Quite honestly, I want people to know what I've been working on for the last whatever years. But at this time, I feel it's important that it's, it's not really about me. It's about making other people aware, uh, you know, stopping and thinking and slowing down and taking some time to, to just, you know, check it out. Anyway, I like to see you face to face. That whole up in the back is nice, but... Okay, um, take it easy. I'll undoubtedly be coming back next week um, and would love to see you. And I've also been doing this a bit on Instagram, so you might run into me there. And we'll see where it goes. Um, I'm so happy you came. And it looks like some of you even stayed for a while. You're courageous. Anyway, take it easy. Stay healthy, that vitamin D, good air, good exercise, good food. Really, thank you so much for coming. I mean. It's great. I'm so happy to share and I'm so happy to see you there. Okay, take it easy. Lots of love to you. Bye-bye.